of the year. We'll read those honorees from past years. Ken Baskin, Nancy Melton, Heather Ryan, Heather Ryan Kelly, Robert Kleinschmidt, Maxine Quilo, Tony Dupuy, Bruce Lindsay, Carol Ann Dale, Gary Bubin, and Melinda Antoon Carmier. So, that is a distinguished list, and this year's recipient joins in those in that category, I should say. Only five years ago, you might have found this year's Artist of the Year carving into copper and pulling her delicate prints in the tent from the Shire of the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. After graduating from McNeese State University in 2002, she began her life on the road. Her travels have taken her to New Mexico, throughout the Southeast, to Europe, and to New York and Pennsylvania. According to this year's recipient, she has certainly paid her dues as a starving artist, often, sleep, often sleeping in her van and living off of $100 a month. Today, she has managed to make a sustainable living and one of the things that she truly loves. While her Florida Lee series has put her on the map, Candace Alexander has a menagerie of artistic skills and bodies of work. Her work often reaches beyond eye candy and moves into a more visceral experience. Even young children are in awe of a 13-foot wooden pencil, a 10-foot Crayola marker, and a 6-foot crayon tucked in the corner of the stairwell at Central School. Candace's studio is a kaleidoscope of movement, color, paintbrushes, boxes, assemblages, drawers filled with clouds, and works in progress. This room is a living documentation of the past 10 years of Candace's work as an artist, as well as real-time experience of her creative process. Candace has received numerous awards and recognitions throughout her career. Some of them include 2005 Best of Show Bay Area Renaissance Festival in Tampa, Florida, 2007 Third Place and Best of Show at Festival International in Lafayette, 2007 Best Artist by Lanyap Magazine, 2008 Jurors Award at the Red River Revell in Streetport, and 2009 Purchasers Award at the Fair Hope Park Show. This year, Candace's Worthy Series was installed in the eighth floor of Lake Charles Memorial Hospital by the Foundation. Aside from producing an astounding body of work, Candace never forgets to give back to her community. Last year, she donated over $25,000 in art to various charities, schools, and philanthropic organizations. She has offered her skills to the Festival to Cure, the Junior League of Lafayette, Junior League of Lake Charles, United Way of Baton Rouge, Jeff Davis, and Acadia Parish Relay for Life, Agni State University, Southfield School, America Speaks, Southern University, Lake Charles Pride, and Our Lady Queen Heaven School, among many, many others. To know Candace, to know Candace, is to know that she lives every day of her life in the creative process. From her deep passion for the environment and sustainability to her organic, to her organic garden, to the movement of her brush as it touches the canvas, Candace Alexander is a true artist. At this time, I'd like to call to the spotlight Ms. Candace Alexander, our 2010 Artist of the Year Award winner, and acknowledge her for her contributions to the art scene in the Lake area and have her accept this award for 2000.
structure which been a, has been a solid foundation to the growth and my success as an artist. Um, I owe nearly nine years of thank you to the City of Lake Charles, the Arts and Humanities Council, Jackie and Matt for allowing me to grow in this space. You guys are amazing. Thank you Darlene and Lewis for managing this creative hub. Just briefly, and I know Randy's kind of gone off on, on saying kind of my story, but in 2002 I graduated McNeese with the idea that um, I probably couldn't make a living here as an artist. With that idea, I left a few pieces lingering here and there, and of course I couldn't make it in a place that I wasn't in. And boy, how those ideas have changed. I searched America, traveling to New Mexico, Florida, Pennsylvania, to and from the space. New York and the circle continued, but yet the space remained to hear its age. I came home as a starving artist about the time the first snow flurry hit in New York in late 2006. I did live in my van. I lived in parking lots, campgrounds, renaissance fairs, and you name it. I rode and the winds carried me searching. In late 2007, I, created, I did create my famous Flirtily series, and months later something amazing happened. I came home to the south, my roots, find the most amazing manifestations I believed in and had always dreamed of. I started selling more work to groups of people, commissions, and the fire continued to burn the passions inside me. I met someone who also deserved to be recognized tonight, someone who stood strong behind me, booked my shows, managed my chaos and creativity at Alexander Art Studio, and made sure I ate. Someone who shifted their entire life because they believe in my passion so much. For this, I would like to acknowledge my partner, Amelia Smith. Sometimes opening your mind and creativity to another person opens doors of love and selflessness. So thank you, Amelia. I would also like to thank my friends, and especially Hallie. Who's in the back? Hallie? Stand. Right back there. So give a round of applause to Hallie.